I'm cracking up laughing because MAGA has been losing their minds. I mean, the <laughs> crying and the wheezing and the whining and the threatening. I mean, they have been losing it. And I'm sitting here going, I'm confused. Y'all are literally <laughs> defending somebody who cheated on his wife, slept with a porn star, lasted 90 seconds, <laughs> uh, then asked his attorney to pay a hush money, hit the payment, breaking campaign finance laws, and that's y'all martyr? Well, I mean, we know this has never been about values or someone being conservative or a traditional family man. This is about white male power. And what they're really crying about is the fact that a white man of like Donald Trump, who they think of as infallible and all powerful, faced any kind of repercussion or consequence. Because you know what he could have just did? Cheat on his wife not paid the hush money because clearly this cult of people do not care what this man does. Instead, he committed a crime to cover up something that, quite frankly, seemed to be right in his wheelhouse. This has never been a man known to be faithful in his marriages. I mean, we've seen the the, the transcripts from the various memoirs from Marla Maples to uh, Ivana Trump. So I don't know what this was about other than the fact that these people can't stand that their leader, if you will, um, lost because they treat him almost like a deity. But I mean, you know, um, if, he, that's if, the route he found out. Uh, Michael, if you really want to see uh, a video of a really just shameful and pathetic black man is this dude right here. <laughs> I can't believe the hoax, this sham, this absolute injustice justice system, D.A. Bragg and the judge should be ashamed of themselves. This isn't just ridiculous. This actually erodes the confidence that Americans have in the justice system. Unbelievable. Here is zoom in. Here is believable. But good news is coming. DA Bragg, hear me clearly. You <laughs> cannot silence the American people. You cannot stop us from voting for change. Joe Biden's injustice, Joe Biden's two-tier injustice system, weaponizing the justice system of the United States of America against a political opponent. Un-American, Joe Biden, you're fired. We the people stand with Donald Trump. I can't believe the hoax, this sham, this absolute injustice. This year, how dare you? I mean, this is an abomination. This is a sham like my engagement. I mean, what am I sitting here talking about? I mean, how, this is, I mean, this is just ridiculous. I mean, Joe Biden, how dare you? No, no, put, put Tim in the box. How dare you? I'm just, I can't believe you, I can't believe y'all did this to my man. All the ass that I've been kissing, I've been sitting here uh, backing this man. I mean, I've been sitting here, I mean, what is wrong? How dare y'all do that to my patron saint? What's wrong with y'all? This ain't right. This ain't fair. Y'all gonna keep me from becoming the vice president. I can't believe y'all did this to my man. What's wrong with y'all? This is not the United States of America. This is a banana republic, and this don't make no sense. I'm highly pissed off. This is the most bass I've had in my voice ever in my life, and this is just wrong, wrong, wrong. Damn it, I need a lollipop. <laughs> Michael, go ahead. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, this is what a certified Negro who is still under warranty looks like. <laughs> Senator Tim Scott is a total disgrace. OK, and I know he likes to talk about he went from uh, cotton, picking cotton to Congress in, in, in uh, one generation and things like this. But his ans his ancestors to pick cotton in South Carolina, if they came back to see what he's doing now, they probably slapped the black off of him. OK, uh, so this is a just ruling. Number one. It was a jury of Donald Trump's peers. He went out today rambling and. Numerous uh, uh, news outlets have fact checks on the lies he was telling, like the Washington Post from Trump Tower lobby, a gusher of falsehoods about the trial. Um, and then also keep in mind that 
down during the 2016 campaign, Donald Trump was saying, you know, Hillary Clinton's emails, Hillary Clinton's emails. But it was Donald Trump's own State Department. Uh, and I'm looking at the article from uh, the New York Times, October 18, 2019. State Department inquiry into Clinton emails finds no deliberate mishandling of classified information. OK, so it's very it's very interesting why he wanted to hang that over Hillary Clinton's head. During, during the 2016 campaigns, and we found out his own State Department exonerated her. He gets busted uh, trying to influence the 2016 campaign. OK, so this is this goes beyond paying just, quote unquote, hush money to an adult film star. This deals with trying to suppress information that he knew and his campaign knew would drastically influence the 2016 campaign against him. He was already saying he was losing votes with women after the Access Hollywood uh, video came out. Uh, we have to use this as a, a teaching opportunity because these videos and things like this, these are good. But if his ass wins the presidency in 2024, we're all going to be crying. OK. Uh, and then lastly, I, I, I saw the the uh, picture and the meme that you posted about the five African-American female judges. Uh, I posted an article about this. There are five of 21 appellate court judges and they're chosen. If you read the article, misleading photos suggest Trump would face an all black, all female panel of judges on appeal is from the dispatch. These are five appellate court judges, but it's a total of 21 appellate court judges. Michael, and it's Michael, usually a panel Michael, of four or five that Michael, are chosen Michael, randomly. Michael, Michael, yeah. Michael, there's a phrase in radio called go with the bit. <laughs> you go with that the comes bit. from the time during the morning. No, no, no. I work it's called, two radio it's called go with the bit. Right now, Michael, you're fucking up the bit. Okay. No, we no. don't need you, you explaining. You go with the oh, bit, they're twenty. No, no, no Michael, reality, Michael, Roland. Michael, Roland. go with the bit. Don't mess the bit up. The you got the all. Morning, Michael, so I read right. an article in the Dispatch, and there are no, actually twenty-one. Michael, go with the no, bit. Roland. Don't fuck up the bit. Okay, I got it. Okay, no, Michael, Michael, go with the bit. Okay. I know there are twenty-one judges. No shit. I googled it, but go with the bit. I'm providing evidence. Damn, you Sigma's all, yo, fuck shit up. Go with the bit. No, we don't. Yes, you do. No, no, all right. We bring the Go back with back. the bit anyway. All right. Now, if y'all want to see somebody totally out of control, is crazy deranged Megyn Kelly. This is her last night on News Nation. And talk about just trying her best to kiss Trump's ass. Organization wrote down legal expenses from the drop down Adobe menu, and that made as much sense as anything else because hush money wasn't an option. He was paying his lawyer who had re who had made the payment to Stormy Daniels, and he was, I believe, reimbursing her, though he denied that reimbursing him, though he denied that on the stand. I don't think there's anything wrong with doing that. I think you pay your lawyer money because he outlaid money for you. You could easily classify that as a legal expense. <laughs> No matter what it's for, right? Even if it's illegal conduct, you can just put it, it's an illegal expense, right? This wasn't, this wasn't illegal. There's nothing illegal about paying hush money for an no. NDA. It's done there, there's not. all but the when time. you're doing it to protect your campaign, it is. That's the difference. No, so, but yeah. what, law, what law are you citing, Dan? Campaign law? finance laws. You're not allowed wrong. to give the- Wrong, you don't know what you're talking what about. What are you talking, what, you're what, wrong. It, explain to me. Let me explain tell, to you. Tell me what I'm getting wrong. Tell me what I'm getting wrong. When you're spending $130,000, I'll explain. Go ahead. I get it, because you're saying that there are limits to the campaign contributions somebody could make, and this has exceeded them, and then they hit it. I understand, that's his theory. However, th this has been wrong from the start. Yeah. It does not amount to a campaign contribution if it is the kind of payment that could ever be made outside that, of the campaign context. That's not the context. standard. The standard is yes, substantiality. It is. It's not, it's, it's substantiality. No, it's not. Yes, it is. You're wrong. Try okay. No, it's we'll, not. I guess we're going to have to agree. To, there's been Supreme Court precedent on this. Uh, yes, there, Jelana, she can just run her damn mouth all day. Here's what we know. His ass guilty. 34 times. Absolutely. <laughs> but, but here's what's killing me, man. I swear on my mama, I need some, some grapes, some crackers, and some, and some brie to go with all this damn wine and that they're doing. It makes not a lick <laughs> of sense. And first of all, I don't know why they whining because other people, because uh, uh, my other job as a part of being a state representative is I'm a criminal defense lawyer. 
for 29 years. When you get convicted, they normally give you bond conditions. You don't get to just walk free, keep your passport, go and speak everywhere, mm -hmm. talk bad about the judge. You don't get to do that. Other people would be locked up. So they should be shouting hallelujah that he's getting special treatment. That's one thing that's incredibly bothersome to me. They talked about Mark Burnett. I don't know if you remember this, Roland, but I was on a show called Survivor. And back on Juneteenth of 2020, a number of black survivors sued, well, we, we started negotiating and threatened to sue survivor Mark Burnett, uh, Jeff Probst, because they were anti-black. And as a result of that, all of a sudden you see diversity. So I have the documents if you ever want to talk about that. So Mark Burnett, even in other uh, shows that he has, has had a bias against black people specifically. So this whole 34 counts, most times that doesn't happen, right? You have a whole bunch of counts, they throw something out. The evidence against Donald Trump was so pervasive and so overwhelming that even people on the jury who supported his dumb ass voted to convict him. So I'm sick of the whining. I'm going to need for them to stop doing all that. And as the gentleman said, uh, the first person that you talk to, what we need to do is we need to vote. And the reason that we need to vote is because two Supreme Court justices are going to be on the ballot. They just are. Alito and Thomas, uh-oh. And if Donald Trump wins, he's going to put some young-ass people on the Supreme Court, and they're going to be there past the lifetimes probably of our children. And if you think that we can't go back to how it was pre-Jim Crow, where they're lynching, then we need to worry because the people that are going to get the most stepped on are us. It's always black people. When he was talking last night, he was talking about letting people come in from Africa. News flash. And notice he said all these countries that the Republicans hate, and it, uh, Muslims, he said, all, but he didn't say Europe. So it's fine for us to let people come in from Europe. I wonder why that is, because they white. Maybe, but you don't want Hispanics, you don't want black people, you don't want Muslim people. He is going to exact revenge on us. So we know what happens when we stay home. It happened in 2016. Yep. And things got really bad. So we came out and we voted in 2020. Thank God. We better vote in 2024 because our children's lives and our grandchildren's lives are going to depend on it. And that's a uh, fact. Now, when you talk about the whining, uh, this to me was absolutely wonderful yesterday. Listen to this. I want to. I, I want to get. I want to get John in for for one final comment. If there is a conviction, what happens to markets tomorrow? Very simple. I think markets crash tomorrow if there is a conviction, but I think they will bounce back because look, even if they put Donald Trump in jail. I think the American people will vote him into president. We will vote him into the White House right out of the New York City jail. It's an outrageous trial and people can see. But if there's a conviction, you think there'll be a crash? I, I think the markets will do very badly. What are you been talking about? A thousand point loss? I, 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 I think we'll see at least a two percent drop. OK, uh, John Carney, I want to thank you. That was y'all John Carney. John Carney said the markets are going to crash. They're going to tank. They're going to be down two percent. Here we go to my iPad. The Dow gained 600 points today, y'all. Uh, so all that nonsense didn't happen. Do y'all see how crazy these people are? Understand they predict doom and gloom and it was up 600 points. Let's beat his ass by at least 400 electoral college votes. Because <laughs> again, that's the way you really uh, stick it to them. it happened, poor people were dying at a rate already of 800 people a day before COVID. If you went to a funeral every single day, it would take you 600 years to attend all the funerals of the people who will die from the ravages of policy violence, poverty, and low wages in America in just one year. It would take you two years and 19 days to go to all of the funerals of the people that will die today and oftentimes Silence. Nobody talks about this political genocide, but we are determined today
to remember their death and be a resurrection of voting power and voice power like never before. Economic justice and saving this democracy are deeply connected. We, as a nation, must listen to the demands of the poor who are pushing and will continue to push political candidates and elected leaders to lift from the bottom so that everybody can rise. We are the poor, the marginalized, and the underpaid. And we are taking one step forward to say that everybody has a right to live. Poverty is not the fault of those who are impoverished. It is caused by those who make the policy. There are over 135 million poor and low-wage, low-income people in this nation. The biggest block of potential voters by far is low-income, low-wage voters. I can't afford medicine. Sometimes I have to skip because of the cost. The farm worker community is tired of the violence imposed upon us by greed, exclusion, and denial of basic human rights. Those folk that are represented by that casket, poor and low-wage workers who are the most moral people in this country because they go to work every day believing, even though going to work is hazardous to their health. I'm tired of working 70 to 80 hours a week and still not have money for the necessity of bills. I'm tired of getting sick and not being able to go see the doctor. Having to make a choice to pay between rent or the light bill or food or clothes. You cannot claim to care about families and a culture of life and then do everything in your power to rob people of equal access to resources and to force them to live in poverty. Leadership of both parties that waged war on poor people and low wage workers. And this government has treated people experiencing poverty, including their military families, with disdainful, deliberate, malicious neglect. So the truth is that my son died from poverty. We refuse to accept poverty as the fourth leading cause of death. The fourth leading cause of death in this, the richest country in the world. We march today for our children and the generations to come. And we need to do it with the loudest voices possible, the biggest actions possible. We will voice our demands and register our vote. When we stand up and when we stand together, things change. There is the electorate that is, and then there is the electorate that should be. 34 million eligible poor and low-income voters did not vote in 2016. If just 20% of those voters in swing states were mobilized around an agenda, they could change the political outcome of every election. So we're launching the most massive voter mobilization and turnout campaign in history of poor and low-wage voters, allies, and religious leaders. People are dying, but we know it doesn't have to be this way. And so we are calling on everyone to join us in this Poor People's Campaign, a national call for moral revival. We are here, we will be seen, we will be heard, and our power will be felt. We don't need to be an insurrection. We are a resurrection that will be felt across this country. Are you ready? 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 We are a resurrection, and we are ready.